Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Homeowner Podcast. My name is Dan Keller, and this is the outdoor version. This is my favorite time of the month to make a podcast because we get to go outside of the office. And the whole idea with this podcast is to help my clients as a veteran mortgage advisor, help my clients make better decisions as they manage home ownership. Part of a home ownership is going out and having some fun and enjoying your time, whether it's in the mountains or on the rivers or on the Puget Sound here in the greater Seattle area. And there's nothing that I enjoy more than going out and fishing. And I get the opportunity oftentimes to go out and fish with some of the best anglers in the area. And today I got our friends from John Sporting Goods, Connor and Malachi, and we're gonna talk, this is perfect timing. We're gonna talk about how to lean cod fish. We got the opener coming up on May 1st. So how to go out and put lean cod in your boat. And boy, are those suckers tasty. So the goal today is to teach you to go out there and have fun, but put some really tasty critters in your boat. So welcome guys. Yeah, Thanks for having us, Dan. Dan. So we've got the opener coming up on Monday and we're going to keep it somewhat elementary. And then we're going to get into some advanced techniques here, but we're going to start from scratch from the very beginning, whether you've lean cod fished before out in the Puget Sound or in the San Juans, or this might be your first time. So let's go ahead and get started. And I think the first thing, let's start talking about, I think this is a kind of a big, one of the things that I first learned were areas, different areas to fish. I know we're going to be up in the San Juans on Monday, but why don't we start with areas and we'll get into gear and uh, strategies. Yeah. Yeah. So Puget Sound, you're going to have definitely f- fewer areas to fish. Okay. I mean, you're, you're going to be in these spots and probably going to have a few more boats than you would say up in the San Juans. Uh, we always say, I mean, the San Juans, there are so many different locations and rock piles and bluffs and reefs. I mean, you have a lot of different areas that you can fish. Um, Puget Sound, I would say probably the most notorious spot is going to be Possession Bar. Okay. Um, you know, the very south tip of Whidbey Island, there's a great bar there that comes up to, oh, I don't know, 40 to, you know, 50 feet as far as depth. Um, but you can go all the way out to 120 feet. So our, we're restricted from that 120 or less as far as link cod fishing goes. Um, but Possession Bar being one of the playmakers for sure. Uh, you'll see a lot of the the sticks, the really good fishermen kind of focusing on that bar. Um, another great location in the Puget Sound would be the south tip of Hat Island, mm-hmm. which is going to be really mm-hmm. close as far as the Everett boat launch goes. Very accessible if you didn't have a, you know, a big, big boat or a good sized boat to get out there. That's definitely a spot that you can go and, and find a few lean cod at. Okay. Um, and then a couple of the other ones that we would say would be Double Bluff, which is around uh, on the west side of Whidbey Island. And then you have foul weather bluff. Those are going to be probably, you know, your most notorious spots, your playmakers, places where you're definitely going to find some, uh, some link cut at. Cool. Now, before we get into the San Juans, just if you're, if you're watching this or if you're hearing this online or you're watching this on YouTube, you can go into John's and purchase John's saltwater fishing guide has yeah. all the maps to all of these areas that you're going to hear Connor and Malachi talk about. Okay. Cause you're going to start, t- you're going to start naming off some fishing holes up in the San Juans and you can do, you can do that. I'd encourage you. I own the saltwater guide. It's saved me a ton of time and has put a lot of fish in my boat uh, over the years. So I'd encourage you to do that. Um, okay. San Juans. San Juan Islands. Now this could be a never ending list of spots and there's, there's places that I don't know that other guys know. And then there's more infamous places where people will fish. Mm -hmm. I would say definitely a spot that's very accessible as far as launching out of Cornet Bay and going through Deception Pass is for one Deception Pass. A lot of guys stick in that pass and fish for Link Cod. It's rocky. It's got a bunch of structure. Uh, the current moves through there, so you're definitely going to have to play with w- more weight on your rod, mm-hmm. and uh, you're definitely going to have to watch your tides. Yeah, you're going to want to go just like everything we say as far as salmon, halibut, all of it, shrimping, crabbing. You're going to want to fish around the tide changes when that water slows down, and that's going to give you the best chance as far as fish being actively feeding. So we may come back to this later, but let's put pa- hit pause real quick. Speaking of tides, cause that's really important in fishing. I'm looking at May 1st, San Juan. So I got Lopez Island pulled up here. 
High tide is at 311. We have a 7.4 foot. Low tide is at 945, 3.1 foot. So talk to us about that. Is this a good lean cod tide? Yeah, yeah, you got, it's definitely, it's not a huge tide. It's definitely okay. on the smaller end of things. So the water's not gonna be moving quite as cool. much. I love having a tide, you know, earlier in the morning like that, but it gives you time to get there, get settled. Uh, pick a location that you want to focus on and, and get your boat to drift across. Love it. Okay. Uh, Good stuff, man. All right. Keep crushing the San Juans. I just wanted to make sure that's, yeah. I've screwed up salmon fishing and fishing by not paying better attention to tides. Yeah. yeah. So. That whole, that whole world in the saltwater revolves around those tides yeah. and uh, they want the least path of resistance. So okay. when that water slows down is when they're going to actively feed. Love it. Love so. it. I, I kind of want to touch on the tides just a little bit more. I think a common misconception, this applies to halibut too, that I always hear, is everyone thinks you need these real tiny little tides that you need to fish. You get slack tide all day, and I think that's when you go out. I treat it more like salmon. You want those kind of middle of the road, even some of the smaller tides are going to be your best. You still have to have current in order to move bait. Mm -hmm. These are all, they're predators, so they're going to go where bait's congregated. Now, if you have a completely dead tide with no movement all day long, the bait's everywhere. Yeah. Therefore, your predators aren't gonna be as easy to find and they're not as readily feeding. Yeah. Okay. So those, what I always like to tell people is that four to eight foot swing or so is gonna be your ideal tide to fish lean cod and halibut too. Okay. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we have out there on, on Monday. Yeah, yeah. So. you guys yeah. look good on Monday. Yeah. have a great opportunity to catch some lean cod. Uh, a couple other spots up there. Uh, you have Cattle Pass, which is, again, in a spot where there could be a lot of current. So, again, following that tide change. And, you know, it, it says the tide's at 9 o'clock. Well, it's not going to slow down until about an hour after that. So if you're there at the tide change, you're going to notice the tides slow down, and that's when you're really going to start seeing some fish moving, and you're going to start catching some fish for sure. Cattle's a big one for tide. That goes ripping through there. So you yep. got a little shorter window to yep. actually hit that one right. Okay. Yep. Lots of structure there right on the outside of it. Lots of little humps, lots of rock piles. So okay. you can you can definitely find link cod there. Another one we go to is up Rosario Strait. It's going to be Bird Rocks. Okay. Uh, you're ba it's the craziest thing in the world. You'll be going up Rosario Strait, and it's two, 300 feet around you, and all of a sudden there's two huge rocks sticking out of the middle of the strait. Uh, but again, a great spot for having lean cod lay there. Uh, I found that the, the lean cod definitely like to lay in a place where there is current, but again, they're gonna feed around the slack tide. So that being a spot where it's, uh, it, it rips through there, but once the tide slows down, it could be phenomenal lean cod fishing. And then the last one, uh, there's a couple of little, it's one reef, but it makes a U shape. So it almost seems like there's two reefs, but it's called Lawson Reef. Um, if you went out of Deception Pass and headed straight towards the very south tip of Lopez, you're going to run right over the top of it. And that's a spot that gets 20, 30, 30 feet deep. Uh, and again, a very good spot, especially on a day where it's, they haven't been picked on for a year. You can definitely find some lead cod there. I've had really good success there. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't drive over that without scraping across it and checking that out. I love it. All right, so uh, we started with that because you guys, I you you know, you know this. The tide's so important. You can have the best gear, the best boat, but the, the wrong tide, and have fun. Yeah. Good luck. It's yeah. gonna be a long day. So we'll start with that. Why don't we get into some some technique, um, and then we'll get into some gear. But I know you guys have some. We were talking about this before the show. You guys have some great tips for either new anglers or even experienced anglers um, that can help again increase your chances of landing a. A legal ling. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing, especially in the San Juans, we run a lot of, uh, they're larger profiles, you know, than say your traditional scampies or twin tails or anything like that. We run a lot of swim baits. Like these, uh, these sculpin here are a really good one. I don't know if the camera's picking up on that. There it is. But uh, these are a nine inch sculpin. We run them with an assist hook running off the back. Those will help kind of weed out some of your smaller lean cod. That's what happens a lot is you run into a lot of sub Here, show that one again. Let's zoom in on that. Yeah. Uh, That's a good one. There you go. That guy right there. Tasty little morsel there. <laughs> you can see the assist hook hanging off the bottom here. That one, you're going to probably catch near half of your fish on mm. this trailer hook. Most lean cod are going to come up, and they're going to T-bone it right here. Okay. So when you have two hooks there, you're just doubling your odds of actually yep. landing yep. that fish. Now, do you guys sell them at John's equipped just like that, or is that kind of an upgrade that you guys add? 
Uh, it's an upgrade that we do add. I have all the components at the shop okay, to good. provide anyone who needs them. Love it. Yeah. Okay. But those those larger profiles, they tend to weed out some of your smaller link cod. One thing that's been absolutely deadly for both Connor and I for who knows how long now are these storms right here. Specifically this brown one. They make a few other colors and they all work, but this one's treated us the best over the years. Okay. Um, lots of link cod. I, I mean incredible days that we've had on those guys and they're pretty durable too you get 20 30 link cod of bait usually yeah okay. we call matching the hatch i mean everything that's swimming down in a link cod's territory is brown of some sorts okay so that one to a t is v matching the bait very very well okay you got some other stuff out here you want to just go down the road stuff. yeah we can <laughs> pick this guy up too this one it, it will work in the san juans absolutely a little flounder there um but this is really for the guys who don't want to get out and get their live bait or they can't find live bait that day. Uh, down here in, you know, north and south Puget Sound, we have these really, really great populations of sand ab. And the link mm -hmm. cod, they, they capitalize on it. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're fishing that south hat spot, possession bar, double bluff, any of those spots that have higher populations of flounder, if you guys either don't have the time or can't get on the flounder, those artificials, they, they work almost as well. Oh, be a great thing to bring up into the San Juans. Like I was telling you earlier, Dan, we struggle to find flounders up in the San Juan Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, so to bring one of those up there is gonna be like a piece of candy to them. I mean, something that they they will absolutely jump on okay. if you're using them. They're pretty easy for a link cod to choke down. I mean, the rest of their, rest of their prey, it's pokey. I mean, you look mm -hmm. at rockfish, you look at oh other ling cod and everything else down there it got spines okay. so when you take a soft little flounder like that there's there's nothing hard about that for them to eat and that's why they they really like to capitalize Love it. On it. do i see a dart is there a dart there we didn't bring a dart we didn't bring a dart this but is a lancer a oh, oh okay so these are the lancer jigs there here everyone everyone's talking about them yeah. these guys they're they're pretty deadly they have a really good sink rate they don't have as much water resistance so okay. they get down fairly quick same thing on those, running that little assist hook. Okay. But those have been really deadly for us. Uh, that green color is really good. They make a purple one that's good. And then the, probably our favorite, it's the water dog. Okay. We don't have it in stock right now, so we weren't able to bring you one. But it's a, a brown and orange. Yeah, yeah, it's a great. And the Lancer jigs are awesome. Any kind of vertical jig, that thing is covering four to six feet of water. I mean, okay. they just have an incredible radius that they cover. So you can, you know, you're jigging that over a rock pile. You're covering all sorts of water. It's erotic. I mean, the people, uh, the link cod just absolutely jump on them. Cool. It's a phenomenal lure. But to uh, touch on the dart subject that Dan brought up, yeah, um, those, those are pretty deadly. Uh, I typically don't run a dart first thing in the morning as long as I'm fishing in and around that tide change. But as soon as that tide flips and really starts moving, yep. there's there's nothing that sinks better than a dart. Mm. Yep. You're going to be on bottom with less weight than anything else with a dart, and they fish incredibly well. Yep. I usually give them pretty hard snaps in order to get them to flutter. What will happen is they'll flutter, 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 and then you go up into your next snap and you'll have something on. They yeah, always really. eat it on the drop. They like it on the drop for sure. Okay. But those those darts are extremely efficient, you yeah. know, in that three to six ounce range or so. Absolutely. Love it. Yeah. I know you got some gear here. Were you going to tie something up or are you going to show us something? Yeah. I know you had a, a treat yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, so we get a lot of questions at the shop. Uh, the way we rig these lighter swim baits like the Storm I just showed previously, uh, we rig them on a Slido rig. Okay. And uh, I figured we'd show you guys how to yeah. tie that one up today. Yeah. Yeah, we, we put a slido in front of it because there's seven eighths of an ounce. So okay. say you're in 20 or 30 feet of water, you probably wouldn't have to add any weight to it. Okay. Um, but once you get up into that 50, 60 feet of water, you got to put some lead in front of it so you can get it down into the zone. Okay. Um, Bring that over here so we can see it in the, yeah, it's over in front of Connor and you're good. There you go. And the cool thing about this setup is this is going to be the exact way we run our light bait rig. Okay. Uh, we're going to put a slido on our braided line. So, so what are you running right here? You typically, you're running, yeah. So right here, I know you guys probably can't see it, but this is 40-pound braid. Okay. Uh, it's going to, you guys don't need to go quite that, you know, 50, 65, 80, like some people think. The 40 is all the breaking strength you're ever going to need, and it's the thinnest. So it means it has the less water resistance, and you're yep. going to take less lead to reach bottom. Yep. So you're, it's just maximizing your opportunities. Okay. The other benefit to braided line is there's no stretch. So if a, 
a f- link cod comes up and sniffs your lure and just taps it, you're going to feel it immediately. Got it. Okay. And that goes back to the rod, too, when we're using these fast-action graphite rods. Uh, the most sensitive, uh, you'll feel just about everything that you need to as far as a link yep. cod and setting the hook. You can, hit, you can hit bottom. You'll feel exactly when you hit bottom, so you'll pop off quick enough. You lose less gear that way. Yep. You know, your shaker lings, when they grab on, you're going to feel those guys. And then sometimes the big guys, they'll suck it in nice and gentle, and you'll feel that bite too. Cool. Yeah. cool. And you can go as far as even knowing what the bottom feels like. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can drop it and be like, okay, we're in a bouldery bottom. I can feel it hitting mm. off, off bigger boulders. Then you can go into, like, this is really tiny little rock. You know, it it's pretty unbelievable what these rods and this braided line, the combo is just perfect for what we're using them for. Love it. Love it. But yeah, let's show him. Tie yeah. it up. Tie it's this right. guy up for you guys. Let's see. Maybe I'll turn him this way. He can see it on the on the, the other camera. Yeah. So first thing we're gonna do is slide our slido onto our. So we got our line. main line here, and I got a sliding swivel right here. Mm-hmm. Slide that guy right onto our main line, just like that. And remember, if you're fishing where you don't have to add weight to it, you can leave the slido just naked above your rig. You don't have to add weight to it. It's not going to do anything. The like, benefit is is being able to snap on uh, a cannonball. Especially so with some of these mid-sized swim baits, like these Delta Power Paddles, they're four ounces, mm. which in most scenarios is enough. Yep. But you start getting into that tide change or you know, you're just in a heavy current area, Mm-hmm. You got to attack on some extra rates. So for these mid-sized baits, the Slido rig is excellent as well. Yep, hundred percent. Okay, so I got Slido onto the main line here. Then what I'll do is I'll take a little barrel swivel like this guy, and I'll attach that. You guys can use a Palomar knot, a uni knot. There's all sorts of ways to do it. Just make sure that the line runs through the eye of that swivel twice, so your braid doesn't slip on you. Well, I'm tying a Palomar here. And guys, I'm telling you, I've come down to your shop numerous times, and you've set me up. Yeah. You've tied some things for me. You've put gear together. You know, I've been exploring with my son different types of fisheries, and so there's some that I just don't know. And you set me up. I mean, this last year we went steelhead fishing. You're like, here you go. We, and you even put it together. So yep. I, this is one of the benefits of John's. You guys can go down there, and these guys are so helpful. Yep, we can absolutely help you with that for sure. Yep. So next step, after you guys got your slido and your barrel swivel attached, I'll take – you know, 24 to 36 inches of 50 pound leader material. It's not imperative, your leader length. It's just to get a little distance from your lead. Okay. Um, and I will go ahead and attach that to the other side of the barrel swivel. And like I was touching with you before, with these storm swim baits, with this 50 pound leader, you get snagged up on the bottom with your swim bait. 50 pound, I'll be able to straighten my hook out, get my gear back, bend my hook back oh, into there you place, go. and y- you lose less gear that way. Okay. Yeah. Then last step, after yeah. you've tied on 24 to 36 inches of that leader material, take my swim bait, my my larger power paddles, whatever. This is also how we do our live bait. I'll go ahead and I'll attach that guy on. So in summary, you're going 40 pound braid mm-hmm. on on the rod. Yeah. Okay. Um, Slido on the Slido. Floor. Swivel, yep, and then fifty pound leader, yep. Okay, so here, right there you go. There's how your rig will look. You'll have your slido and your barrel swivel here, then you'll have your leader material to your swim bait, or if you're fishing live bait, be your live bait or whatever you guys are using. Yeah. Okay, so we're up in the San Juans. Let's uh, we'll come back. We'll center this up we're in the San Juans, and since we're on this, you've just tied this up. Talk to us how to fish it. Okay. Yeah, this can be, like I said, this is definitely one of my top producers. If, when I go with you on Monday, you'll mm-hmm. see I'll have 10 packs of these with me because okay. I have a lot of confidence in these. Um, there's a couple ways to fish them. Like I was telling you, if you're coming up on a place where you have, I would call it a wall. So okay. you have, say, 20 feet, and it's going to gra- straight down into you know 80 feet. Okay. You have a big wall there. I'm actually going to take this and cast it. So I'm going to cast it up towards the shallow point, Mm -hmm. and this thing is going to just gradually fall down the wall. Okay. Um, It's a very effective way as far as fishing a wall. And as far as positioning the boat, 
I'm going to take my boat so the tide's going out. Mm -hmm. We're going to move from point A to point B. I'm going to try and cover as much of this rocky structure that I can with these. Okay. Um, I would say generally with this kind this kind of setup and, uh, you know, as far as the depths we're fishing, we're going to be probably 30 to 60 feet. Okay. You usually add three or four ounces in front of this swim. I was going to ask you, so on the, on the swivel there, yep, you're on the slide, about yep, three right on, ball. Yep, you're just yep. going to snap a cannonball, yep. and that thing can slide as far as mm -hmm. it wants up, and then you'll feel it once you get to a point where it comes back and snaps your barrel swivel, okay. and then you know your weight's right in front of your swim bait. Okay. And this occasion, you want to be pulling this thing because it's a swim bait. It has a tail on it that that it's going to kick like this. So you're going to have a little angle to your dangle, as we say. You're going to okay. have a little angle to your line, and then you know that swim bait's working through whatever zone you're fishing. Cool. And this stuff should be, I mean, you're from five feet to the bottom. You're not dragging the bottom, but if you dropped your rod tip enough, you would tap the bottom and then bring it back up. Okay. And you're just moving with it. You're moving with the current. The tide's just going to pull and you. Are you jigging at all? Are you you this, just letting her go? No, this one here, you're just, it's going to do all the work for okay. you. You're okay. basically going to make sure you're close to the bottom, and that thing's going to swim down there for you. Yeah, cool. the, the swim baits, you know, with the paddle tail. So there's there's a bit of a difference in tail. So these guys here, they'll have a paddle tail. Okay. Those guys will have their own action. Okay. Yep. So therefore, you're kind of just going to leave it down there. It's going to do all the work for you for the most part. Just ensure that you're constantly checking your bottom. Okay. These guys or the Lancers or any of your scampies or anything like that, you can see there's no big paddle on it. Mm -hmm. So they're not really going to have a ton of their own action. So you're going to have to impart that Got yourself. It. You're going to create the action by jigging. Um, same okay. thing goes for darts. Yep. Darts, you got to, like I was talking earlier, I like to rip them. So I, I do almost like a full hook set up, and then I'll let them fall on a semi-taut line, and that's when you get your bites. Yep. These guys, you'll kind of just do a slow lift up, and then let them fall on a slow lift up. Okay. And you'll kind of get the up, and then it'll flutter back down. Same goes yep. for the Lancers, but they're a little more crazy in the water. Yep. And cool. say that tide does start picking up, we were telling you as well, you're going to want to you kind of troll against the tide. You still want a little angle to your line, so you don't want to completely dead stop yourself where your lines are perfectly vertical. Um, but you're got definitely going to have to be on the kicker, and you're going to have to back troll a little bit to slow your boat down. Love it. All right. Lastly, uh, viewers, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to pull it. There we go. <laughs> what do we got here? What are? Uh, that's probably a better. I'll hold it right here. Will you describe what this we're This is using? what they call a jigging rod. Shim okay. This is a Shimano Travala. Um, an absolutely fast action graphite rod, okay. perfect for any kind of bottom fishing we're doing. Okay. Uh, it's a six foot three. We generally stick between six and seven feet. That's going to be a perfect length for you as far as bottom fishing goes. Okay. And then I myself like using a, a, a bait caster, as they would say, okay. and it has a push button lever on it. Uh, so you basically are going to click it, put it into free spool, and then engage by reeling. Okay. And what that does is I can sit there and free spool and engage my spool extremely fast. I'm not flipping a lever where I have to flip it down, yep. flip it back up. So I'm spending not as much time dragging my stuff on the bottom to where I hit the bottom, I pull it up and engage the spool. And if you're with me in Malachi fishing, you would hear that clicking sound. It sounds all like day. we're tap dancing all it day. It sounds yeah. all, all yeah. day long because we are. We know where the fish are. We know we want to be right on the bottom. And uh, that's just what it takes to, to be successful. Love it. And you saw all this the rod, reels, everything oh, yeah. down at the shop. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have all this all this at the I'm shop. Not gonna hold sure. you to a price, but what, what what are we looking at for that setup typically? Um you know, for I would say for not an entry, but once you're starting to get into some quality stuff, mm -hmm. our rods are gonna start right in and around a hundred dollars and your reels are gonna start right in and around a hundred and fifty to two hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're, okay. overall you're you know, three hundred or less for a, a fairly great comp. Yeah. 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 Good enough for out here in the Puget Sound. For sure. Yeah. Wow. And you can definitely use your salmon reels. That That's more than sufficient for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we would just want to change the line on it if you had it filled with mono. Okay. I can't, I mean, the braided line is absolutely a game changer for you. When you're fishing it's like a that. necessity. You it have is. to have it. Okay. Uh, one thing to touch on to expand on Connor, these shorter rods are awesome for getting more longevity out of your fishing day. Part of the, one of the biggest, biggest things with these, a lot of guys will go out there with, you know, their nine to 10 and a half foot salmon rods and jig these four to eight ounce lures all day long. But that's, that's a good way to kill out your shoulders. Yep. Yeah. 
you will stay more efficient and be able to fish longer all day long with these shorter fast action rods. They just give you the perfect lever to work these lures the way that you need to work them yep. all day. Absolutely. And it, I don't know if we stress, this is a one piece rod. Uh, one piece is just gonna be able to handle a little more weight. Uh, once you start getting into the two piece rods, you start getting up to say eight, 10 ounces, uh, you're, you're stressing that where it breaks in half quite a bit, the ferrule. Uh, so one piece rod, and that transfers as far as being more sensitive too. Cool. You're gonna have a more sensitive stick. Love it, love it. Okay, a couple of tips and we'll wrap up. Mm-hmm. Uh, boat positioning, um, you know, drifting, moving with the with the current, stuff like that. I know you've got some tips on uh, best practices there because if you're moving too fast, you're going to pass them up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's talk about that you, before you we wrap up. Definitely, like we were saying, you want to, if, if the current picks up, you got beyond the slack tide, now you're kind of in the middle of the tide. Mm-hmm. You're going to definitely want to back troll against the current. Um, just going to slow your boat down. And like I said, you want a little angle to your line, but mm-hmm. not, a, not a whole bunch. Um, so yeah, back trolling against it's gonna be a necessity for sure. Okay, perfect. One of the things that you, I think it's a, it's a, it's a law, you have to have a, a descender device, right? Oh, so that's yeah. something we should definitely talk about. Make sure you don't yep. get caught without one of those. Yep, a little descender device. I have them at the store. They're kinda, kinda hard to explain, but basically if we catch something that we don't wanna catch, like a rockfish, mm-hmm. um, just to even be legal and to be able to fish link cod, you gotta have one of, mo- one of them on your boat. Yep. We generally just tell fellas to to rig a rod up with that setup already on it. So if you do catch one, you can quickly descend mm-hmm. descend the fish back down. And we're generally using quite a bit of weight on this rod just because we want to get him down back to where he comes from. If you're using a lightweight, a lot of them can swim against the weight. So, you know, you're looking at 20 ounces to a couple pounds just to make sure that you get them back down into the zone. Love it. So you guys have, you have that at the shop. Oh, yeah. Anything we missed? Gosh. What do you think? I, I think the last thing that I would talk about is, you know, what we say here isn't the only thing that works. The beautiful thing about lingcod and bottom fish is it's a world to explore. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, places like the San Juan Islands, it, you guys can absolutely go to the spots that we do, and you guys will see great success from them. But if you guys wanted to go out there and explore the beautiful islands that they are, what I tell everyone is take your chart plotter, zoom out a little bit, Look for high spots. You mm-hmm. guys will find all these little offshore reefs. You know, as long as they're under 120 feet, they're going to hold rockfish and lingcod. Yep. Then on top of that, as far as the gear end of things, they're they're an aggressive fish. Mm-hmm. So as long as you guys have, you know, similar colors, similar profiles, you guys are going to get on fish. That's that's why lingcod can be so much fun. Yeah, There's yeah. just an array of stuff you can get. Absolutely. I love it. Well, we're going to be up there on Monday. I'm, I'm super stoked to fish with you guys. I want to encourage you two things. One, I want you to follow, if you're listening to this for the first time, I want you to follow the John Sporting Goods Facebook page. You guys are doing a great job producing some great content. We're going to be sharing, hey, maybe we do a video on money on, on how to use the descender device or how to hook up um, a particular setup that we're using. So I love that you guys are doing that. It's helping out anglers. It's helping me out a ton from kokanee to salmon to blackmouth to, to now lean cod. So I yeah. appreciate you guys doing that. And lastly, uh, John Sporting is right down here, downtown Everett yeah. on Broadway, North Broadway. Yeah. Come down and see these guys. They will get you into fish. That's one thing for sure. Yeah. So appreciate you guys coming on today. And yeah. we got to get you back soon. I think we got to get back and talk about kokanee because it's kokanee season too yeah, i love May. upon us yep, starting to fire up a little bit warming up so it's yep. kokanee time that's too. it we're gonna have great weather for the the link hot opener so hey guys thanks again and uh again we'll bring you some information on monday thanks, all right thanks yep. for having us dan bye See guys you.